All right, so we're out here prepping for this new giant corn maze. Just gotta do a little bit of tilling here. Probably gonna take a little bit of time, but you know, it's just another thing here. Uh, here. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of time. Uh, Looks like oh, I got what? you covered. <laughs> it's the tilling. <laughs> Welcome to the tilling typhoon. What's up guys? We're doing a big old patch here. You've seen us do the mow down showdown where we covered, cropped, and then chopped and dropped like it was extremely hot. And it was actually very hot. today it, it is really hot. It's <laughs> hot and humid. It's classic summer here. So what's the thought here, Jacques? So we've got this huge wild area and we've got a whole bunch of compost. We want to spread it out, till it in, because we got some nice fun plants for this area. A lot of really cool plants. Uh, we have this idea of sort of doing like a fall patch, I guess. By the time fall comes around, it'll look really good. Maybe a bit of a corn maze, maybe a bit of a very big three sister style yeah. uh, milpa. And you were saying you've got a corn that you picked up. <laughs> yeah, so I got a couple different interesting corns. One of them is called Bloody Butcher. And it's like deep red, dark red. It's like 12, 14 feet tall. So it's gonna look very striking. And apparently it's delicious for like yeah. cornmeal and grits and things like that. The first thing we gotta do though, guys, is actually get this thing prepped. Cause it's, you can see it's looking a little rough right now. So <laughs> I'm gonna move our honking tiller out of the way. And we're gonna start spreading this. We've got it roughly spread out. Now begins the tilling process. I've never used this tiller. It's a rear tine tiller. Apparently all I gotta do is just switch it to on, pull it, move it into place. So it's gonna get pretty loud, but I'm excited to see if this thing can grind through this compost and that hard fill soil. Guys, I don't know if it's going deep enough here because if you come in and look, there's just not, I'm scraping up the compost and a little bit of that chop and drop, but I don't really think I'm getting down into that soil. So I have to think about this and we'll see what we can come up with as a solution. Cause if I don't get into that soil and I don't incorporate some of that organic matter, there wasn't really a point to doing this till. Yeah, I think I might've come across the problem. I don't think I removed the little stopper plate. I don't know the right term for it, but it should go a little bit deeper now. I think it was just blocked by that plate kind of dragging. So we'll see, hopefully my that inability to read the manual didn't hurt me too much here. It's that easy guys, read the manual. <laughs> I don't know why I did not look at that, but hey, at least we're off to the races. Let's keep this tilling party going. Well, it's the afternoon now, it's the late afternoon, and <laughs> the process is finally complete. Jacques, I had to run for a bit. You and Paul, one of our new helpers here at the homestead, took care of some of this. Do you mind explaining really quickly like, what we did? Yeah, so basically we put down the three cubic yards of compost, and we, <laughs> I think you did the first tilling pass uh, yeah. to run. Yeah. And then we noticed that it wasn't really getting into the subsoil. Yeah. So me and Paul just got two Maddox, we went to town, we broke up the bottom, and then we just tilled it at like another three passes. Yep. So now it, the color looks good. It looks like we actually got some of that native soil in. Yes. And it's feeling a little bit looser. I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good. And I think this, the soil's loose to like at least six to eight inches. Yeah. Maybe even a little bit more. Yeah. And, and that's what we need. And so what you can see is we laid out this measuring tape here. I thought we'd have like 50 feet. I guess, <laughs> I guess my measurements are just off internally in my brain, guys. But we got about 20-ish, right? And so yep. we'll, go, we'll go 20 by 20. I think we're not trying to get extremely precise now. In my perfect world, I'd have like this beautiful square bed. We're just gonna mark out some rough corners here and then do a little bit of leveling and discuss while we do that, some of our thoughts for what exactly you could plant in a spot like this. Actually, Jacques and I were talking and the process you've seen here on the Homestead Channel from the cover cropping to the chopping and dropping the mow down showdown to <laughs> what we just did here if you're a budget conscious gardener working with your native soil, this is extremely cost effective for a space of this scale. Totally, and in the end, like this will now probably be a really nice bed. Like we'll probably four get- Four years. Great benefits out of this. 
And we yeah. won't have to till it again. Exactly. So why don't we just start smoothing out, Jock? Yeah. Remember, I'm trying to keep this grade nice and flat here because it's such a drop down to the pond. The more we can soak up here, the better. Yeah, and actually, I don't think we showed it in the beginning, but we also put like three quarters of a bag of biotone in here. Yes, so we also threw some organic fertilizer in. Kicked it up a notch. Quite frankly, probably could have added more, but not a big deal because Remember, all this is just compost mixed in, so there should be some good organic matter in here. One thing we've learned is that if you build a new bed, especially if you till it like we did here, you wanna let it sit for probably at least two weeks. Yeah, I'd say one week minimum, two weeks optimal, because what we noticed when we did the till in the back beds over there is we planted really pretty much right away. Yeah. And the compost wasn't quite finished from the municipality. The activity, I think you get like basically a biological activity sort of spike really quickly. Yep. Um, that's my best guess. And it seems to stress the plants out, especially if the compost is hot. It's not ideal. Yeah, and we've also, I think our other theory was that it settles and then the roots kind of get smushed. Yeah. Because it's so fluffy at the beginning. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword. So one way to think about this garden, guys, is, hey, just do what you want. This is like, we're calling it the Big Papa Patch. <laughs> Is, I just named that, the Big I was Papa like, Patch. Did okay. Well, it's because we have a Big Papa here, we have a Big Papa here, <laughs> and you saw Paul in today's video as a Big Papa. So it's a triple Big Papa Patch, and maybe we do the three Papas. The three Papas. We do the three Papas planting method, because <laughs> something about this is, that I really love is like, this is just gardening for fun. It's just like, get creative, do whatever you want, be free. Oh, I want to throw this here, just throw it there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's way less precise than the other garden, uh, so which to me, you know, Gotta get used to it, but I think you might get a little addicted. I'll I might get, I might, I might be really into this. Well, look, I, I love the cover crops when we did it. Loved it because it just looks so nice. Yeah, Jacques, with this much space, how are we thinking about designing it? Because you could, I mean, with this much space, you could just do all corn and do a corn maze. Totally. You know, if we could build a legit corn maze, I've would, never. Let's just say I'll get lost in it, and I won't, <laughs> and I won't come out. Put a little Adirondack chair in the my middle. Goal, my goal will be to not get out. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for this because I've always wanted to grow more dry beans, dry corn, preservation. Yeah. And it's just hard to justify the space in a smaller area. And so this is kind of like the chance to experience it and see if it is worth it. And maybe it is. I'm a little less excited about that than I am the freedom to grow melons, cantaloupes, right. and big papa pumpkins, guys. <laughs> I want to grow a pumpkin I can sit on, you know, like, and it doesn't break under the weight of my, you know, big papa frame. I've put on a little, little poundage. It's coming <laughs> off soon. We may even be doing, Jacques, you and me, if you're, if you're game, uh -huh. we, we may even be doing a little bit of that apocalypse survival this summer. <laughs> I kind of do want to try it. Seeing if we can do it. I think maybe like a couple weeks, yeah. not, a, not a full month, maybe later in the summer. Yeah. And actually, I'd love to invite you guys to participate with us. That'd be really fun. Uh, on the Homestead channel because it is one of the most interesting kind of like thought experiments you can do. Hey, can I actually live off this if it really came down to it? And I think you'd be surprised at the answer. <laughs> yeah. How about this? Why don't we put a poll out to everyone at Epic Homesteading on this video and we'll do a poll of what we should plant here. We'll obviously select some options, but like, do we want to see the corn patch? Do we want to see the melon patch? Like what's the okay, favorite? Sure. And we'll go call it the community garden. This is you guys gardening with us. <laughs> I'm a uh, 50% dirt right now. By weight, Jacques is 50% silt, loam and clay <laughs> and sand. The perfect growing medium. Just throw me in the compost pile when I'm done. I used to be afraid that plants would grow in my stomach as a kid. <laughs> oh, like the don't eat the watermelon seeds kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. I used to think a watermelon would grow in my stomach. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I don't got time for that. I'm not spitting out these seeds. You ate them? Yeah. That explains a lot. Looks like our girl's here. Bobka, you checking out the new patch? This is a uh, prime hunting grounds for her. Oh yeah. We're gonna put the wobbler on for a couple hours. Thanks for joining us in this transformation episode. Curious to see what you guys want to see here. So please do let us know. I'll put a little poll here. Community garden, epic home setting style. Until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing. Wobbled in both eyes at the same time. Woo. The dream.